are nearly 100 commanders in rise of kingdoms and a good chunk of those commanders are just absolutely useless a lot of you watching started playing rise of kingdoms this past summer either in june or july and at this point you've been playing the game for five or six months and you're either in kvk2 or maybe kvk2 just finished and now you're gearing up for kvk3 and kvk3 is sort of like the transition period for season of conquest which is the end game of rise of kingdoms and so a lot of you guys are going to start to get access to a lot of the commanders that you've never even seen before in rise of kingdoms the floodgates will be effectively wide open and a lot of you guys if you've been watching my channel or chiskel or some other content creator here on youtube you probably know like some of the best commanders to invest in right well we always talk about nevsky we always talk about cpo prime we always talk about joan of arc prime or juge leong right you might know which commanders should be your first investments but as you continue playing the game you might be thinking like okay well what about Harold? because one of these skills looks like it might be pretty good with so and so or okay well what about alexander the great i know that like he can be sort of you sometimes should i pick him up in kvk2 or what about chook right i never hear about chook i feel like he could be used with x y or z commander and so in this video today we're going to be going over some of the absolute worst commanders to be investing your universe legendary commander sculptures into as a free-to-play player in rise of kingdoms and a lot of this advice also carries to low and mid spenders as well and what better way to relay this information to you than with a tier list okay now I'm gonna be breaking this down between bad worst and niche okay now really uh, for if there's commanders in the niche category i'm going to explain why they're here but there's a good chance that you should not be putting universals into them and then if there's a commander in bad or worse then you should definitely not be using your legendary commander sculptures there so i wanted to have at least a couple different tiers here because i do want to distinguish between like okay this isn't as bad of an investment as this commander but really everything in this video you know that you really if you're doing the right thing you should steer clear now the first thing that i want to talk about here and we're just going to jump right into this so if you appreciate that drop a thumbs up on the video but let's talk about richard the first okay because in theory you could put him at bad okay i don't think you would put him worse but you could put him at bad i'm gonna put him in niche and here's why i think pretty much all players should have a five one 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 richard okay he's really great for chaining barbarians in the open field he's very tanky and even you know a five five one one richard could help you out in the early game especially if you're spinning the wheel a ton as a low or mid spender but this video is primarily focused towards free-to-play players and i think that after the 5111 mark richard becomes a bad or worst investment okay but the first skill at five i think is niche and i think that he belongs here okay and what i mean by that is there's at least a use for him and if you get him and you stop him at 5111 you're fine you're chilling that's actually a good place to stop you go beyond that then just consider him in one of these other categories okay I'm warning you now the next thing I want to talk about is the legendary gathering commanders and the reason that they go in the worst category and I want to pause here for a moment these are actually the worst places to spend your universal legendaries like they're actually the actual worst okay there's a few reasons for that first of all they have virtually zero pvp compatibility you can't fight virtually at all with them okay there's just a, there's just no way okay second of all they are gold key commanders you can get these commanders for free from the gold keys and you'll have access to the gold keys at the very start of the game so you're going to be getting them for free over time and you can correct me in the comment section if i'm wrong but i feel like what we've seen over the years is that from people who look at thousands of key openings it seems to be the case that the legendary gatherers are the most common to drop from the gold chests again if i'm wrong about that and you can prove it let me know in the comments section below but that seems to be the case from what i remember seeing over the years i've i've done the math myself it was a long time ago that seems to be the case but beyond that not only are you going to get them for free from there but you're also going to get commander sculpture chests and you can choose which one you want for free you can see here i have literally hundreds of each of these commanders already and i have 329 of these legendary commander sculpture chests okay so you have multiple reasons why they are the absolute worst investments here in rise of kingdoms and you absolutely under no circumstances should ever put a single universal in either of them next let's just throw a commander in the bad category that way you guys have an idea as to what my thought process is throughout this video and charles martel goes in the bad category now what does this mean does this mean that charles martel is a bad commander actually no does this mean that he can't be used for pvp actually no he's actually by far the best on this list out of everything that we're going to talk about he's 
quite good. The reason that he is a bad place to use your universal legendary commander sculptures is because he's a gold key commander. You're going to get him for free over time. And I know what you're thinking. Omniarch, it takes so long. I know, brother. I know. Trust me. It took, I, it took me five years to expertise Freddy. Okay. So I know how bad it is to expertise these gold key commanders. I get it. And I spend money, which means I've gotten more gold keys than your average food play player. And even still, I'm telling you that this is a bad place to use your universal legendary commander sculptures. It is almost the worst place and the reason for that is because putting sculptures in a martel is not going to move the needle for your account in the long run if you are let's say 10 sculptures away from a 5511 martel you may be tempted to complete that that way you can use him for your upcoming kvk and sure he might be okay for that kvk but for the longevity of your account those are effectively 10 sculptures in the garbage because they could have been used on Scipio prime they could have been used on nevsky they could have been used on any other commander when you hit season three and those 10 sculptures are goodbye they're in the trash they're in the garbage right and eventually you're going to bench Charles Martel and you're never going to use them again right so like you're literally kind of throwing them in the garbage and letting them on fire for maybe one kvk it's not worth it guys it's not worth it it's not going to absolutely change the trajectory of your account it's not going to be a night and day difference you're not going to go from losing a kvk to winning a kvk just because you did this trust me don't do it it's not worth it okay now that you kind of have an idea as to the different categories here with that being said let's move on to Constantine and he goes into the niche category and I gotta say um between these two I would say you're probably better off investing in the 5111 Richard because it's cheaper than what you would need for Constantine the reason Constantine goes here and not here or here is because he can be used in Sunset Canyon and Lost Canyon very effectively is it going to put you at the top of the leaderboard no that's going to be reserved for VIP 18 players but you can get that one use out of him. I still use him in my Canyon and I've had him at five, five, one, one for a very long time at five, five, one, one. He is solid in Canyon, but beyond that, he's a punching bag in the open field. He, you can make the argument that right now with Gorgo, he is sort of a garrison. Like you can, you see it. Okay. You see it. You see Gorgo Constantine. It's a thing people are doing and it's okay. I'm not ready to say that it's meta. I don't think I don't think it's meta I think you have better options but people are using it and and you know so the question is like why is he niche well he's niche because this is for free to play players and you're not going to be in a garrison so like it doesn't even matter right so he goes in niche I think that's pretty clear just don't do it next we'll talk about Genghis Khan uh Genghis Khan is also one of the worst places for your sculptures he is a glass cannon he has been outclassed twice now once by Zhang Yu a second time by Huo and he also is uh, he slows himself down he has his own debuff and that's the worst thing for a glass cannon is not being able to get away like what is that he is built horribly his kit is trash he has a relic it's not good enough it's not even close to good enough uh because his skills his raw skills have no stats on them he's he's trash he's trash don't ever use him he's not worth it never 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 uh not even niche no, never just never I'm gonna jump around this list actually we're gonna have fun let's go and throw Julius Caesar in worst okay um the difference between Caesar and Martel is that Martel is usable Caesar kind of isn't okay now I know some people have like come up with these super niche like oh if I use Zhang Yu with Caesar secondary and I double relic him and yeah yada yada, yada. I get it. I, I know there's some some players who try to make Caesar a thing he's not a thing especially not for a brand new free to play player don't put universals into him he's one of the worst commanders in the game easily so please even with the double relic uh we've seen testing people have tried it even with double relic it's not it's not going to make it in in any of your lineups and he's not going to move the needle at all so definitely no caesar okay in the same vein as that is freddy now i think freddy actually with the introduction of liu che i think that he actually is better than caesar um which is not something i thought that i would say caesar's relic is quite good and so i thought that you know he would always be a little bit better than freddy but with liu che in the game like there is a use for him he's just outclassed by so many other people that you're never going to use him right like you're just not now if you're a free-to-play player who you know five years after watching this video you get him expertise for free and like you know Liu Che is still a thing he won't be then you know sure like you might have use for him but at the end of the day like he's a damage over time commander which is never really meta and you know you could use Sargon instead he's still one of the worst commanders in the game so he belongs in in this category don't use universals here also Tao Tao we're just going to drop Tao Tao here a lot of people try to make Tao Tao a thing especially because they see people use him in KVK and let me just be clear the reason that you see Tao Tao in KVK is because he has the mobility tree and so he can run away like let's say you're doing a cavalry rally you could put your Tao Tao in there and he's fast and so you might have you the odds are that you might be able to run away 
from all those people that are looking to like swarm down all the uh all the remaining armies if the rally is canceled or if the target bubbles or whatever the case is right so that's why you see Tao Tsao, but you don't want to use Tao Tsao. trust me it's not worth it he's not meta he's really like in kvk1 sure besides that no sort of the same thing as martel except i think martel is actually better right so like just don't don't do it for Tao Tsao. just don't okay this one's gonna be controversial uh, i'm gonna put tamiris here i know i know i know right now here's the thing about tamiris some of the mid to high spenders are going to take offense to this because there actually is quite a good use for tamiris even in season of conquest and that's because her fourth skill adds poison stacks to a target which makes that target take up to 45 percent extra skill damage which is insane the thing about this is though and as good as this is for swarming structures free to play should not be really swarming structures okay let's like let's just be real here also you're not gonna be able to infinitely stack this right so it's not like every player needs to bring a Tamiris you really only need to have a few players that are occasionally online to be swarming things down with a Tamiris present now of course the more Tamirises that are there the faster you have the stacks surely that that's true but again for a free to play player you probably shouldn't even be swarming flags forts anything like that okay so like just don't do it and if you're not going to do that well then you don't need to myris again i want to make it clear that like this video is not to tell you that this commander is trash what it is is a guide for free to play players to tell them don't put your universals here okay you're not going to get the value out of it it's not worth it please don't do it there's way better things to focus on let the whales get to myris okay let let them do their thing you know what i'll put her in niche how about that i think that's a fair that's a fair middle ground okay there's one thing she can do is that going to make you guys happy okay we're going to put leonidas in bad though wow he definitely deserves to be there and that's because he is super outclassed by a million other commanders in the game at this point and his damage factor is low and there's just no real good use for him okay i've seen people use him in canyon as like a tanky arm sure okay sure just no he's not good he's slow he's bad don't do it also let's just throw ragnar in the worst category he's very similar to caesar when it comes to like what they do if you look at their kit he's basically caesar okay it's even their relics like when you take the whole package into consideration they're very similar don't do it same reasons as caesar and also while we're here we can slap el cid and charlemagne in the worst category as well i did recently expertise El Cid for free from the gold keys he's not good you'll never use him whales might get some use out of him in season one and two of kvk but besides that he's trash and Charlemagne is like easily one of the worst commanders in the game like he belongs up here he's utter garbage he's super super bad even with his relic there's just no way to save him he's just trash so never use your sculptures there also because I know you've been thinking about it let's put Edward of Woodstock here okay Edward of Woodstock is I mean he's he's probably a worse investment than even Leonidas to be honest with you guys Edward of Woodstock is cursed with his rage requirements his expertise has been mis mistranslated miswritten misunderstood it doesn't really work okay it doesn't work as it's written at least there's just nothing to like about Edward of Woodstock if you get one of his you know his second or third skill to five and he's a bastion commander in your kvk then great you get the little bonus there but uh other than that you're never going to use him maybe the whales will use him to rally in season two of kvk but as a free to play player he is utter garbage you're not going to make him work you're just not his damage factor is too low he's he's never a commander you should think about i'm going to be honest with you i'm going to round out the bad category with some of the other gold key commanders here and these gold key commanders fall in this category just like charles martel i think that mehmed is probably the best gold key commander actually no probably thutmose mehmed and thutmose i made a video about it you could actually go take a look at that but these commanders are some of the best gold key commanders in the game right here but they're still bad investments for your for your account do not put universals here it's not worth it you're not gonna just don't do it okay just don't do it even if they are good like I said with Charles Martel it's not gonna move the needle for your account okay and that's what we're really talking about here as an investment will it matter later no it will not I'm gonna put Lubu here Lubu is also one of the worst commanders in the game and the thing about Lubu is that if you just started playing the game you can't even get him anyway so don't worry about this but if for some reason you're a returning player player uh, nothing's changed with Lubu he's trash he didn't even get a relic okay he's literally just un unplayable never do it never ever same thing with Wu Zetian as a free-to-play player uh she's a garrison commander and she's one of the worst garrison commanders in the game right now okay so don't do it not worth it she's bad so we'll just 
just going to leave it there. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put Theodore here. I'm also going to put YSS. I'm going to put Zenobia. We're going to do Yadviga. We're going to do Flavius. We're going to do Yanziska. We're going to do Dido or Dido, however you actually say that. All those commanders have one thing in common, and they are all garrison commanders. And as a free to play player, you are not going to be a late game garrison leader unless you're in like a D seed kingdom and you're mega active. Okay. And even then like, I, eh, you know, so like, I'm not going to recommend this at all. None of these commanders don't invest in them. I know some of you might be looking at like Theodore. Oh, she's got a circular AOE and you might be able to use it to chain. Sure. Right. Sure. Maybe, but you have Heraclius for that. Right. And as a matter of fact, like I want to put Heraclius here, but I'm going to put him in niche just because he has the circular AOE. Okay. Now you have Ruge Leong, which is just a better circle circular AOE commander if you want. But like, if you're looking to chain barbarians or something and you want to just unlock Heraclius for that, sure. Go for it. He's got some universal tanky stats and like, he gives you a shield with the circular AOE. So like it is what it is guys. Um, but really like if I'm being honest with you, he should probably be up here. Okay. He should be in the worst category, but I'll put him niche just because I know some people use him for some things and like he's kind of built as a city garrison commander and so like you know if there's one thing that a free-to-play player would defend it is their city uh they shouldn't they should be bubbled or teleport to safety but you know I think technically Heraclius I think isn't as big of an offender as these others here you know you could make the argument for YSS as well but he doesn't have the circle so yeah there's just don't do it okay now some of you might be looking at Flavius and you're like oh I use Flavius in the open field or I'll use Dito in the event you shouldn't be uh you shouldn't be okay you've got a million better choices at this point so don't invest in them as far as garrison commanders go uh, also a mandatory I'm gonna put her in bad I do think she's like slightly better in the open field than commanders like you know Wu Zetian Theodora YSS like you could maybe use her should you no just no okay don't do it she's out she's that's last two years ago that's when you could have done that it's too late now technically if you look at her skills it's a it's a, a hair above the others here so there you go also uh margaret and bobber where is he they are going in worst as well the arrow towers or the range combat kind of got a little buff recently but you, as a free-to-play player you have a million other things to focus on you don't have the gear for this it, it, it's not as good as you think it's not a cheeky little anti-meta thing like it you're not that guy bro don't do it it's not worth it please going through here um i'm gonna put chandra gupta here uh the thing is like with rally commanders like they tend to have some, some more skills that work in the open field than the garrison commanders okay so you know even though as a free-to-play player you're not going to be really rallying any anything of significance you know you, so you shouldn't really be investing in rally commanders but some of the rally commanders can be used in the open field i think chandra gupta is like is he as bad as the top tier no but just don't do it he's just bad he's bad same thing with cyrus i think like you know if you're a mid to high spender and you're an archer main and you're commenting angrily at the video like look i get that you have a use for him and i'm not saying he's a bad commander what i'm saying is he's a bad investment for free-to-play players so that's where he goes same thing with like actually you know what i'm gonna put harold and pakal in the niche category really they belong here okay but i do still see and this was shocking to me i do still see people using this as like a kill farming army like they're far, they're, they know they're losing. They're getting swarmed and they're just farming kills. It's not nearly as good as it used to be. Trust me. I, I actually trade consistently positive with it now because it's just outdated. So really these two are bad investments, but hmm, I'm torn. I'm going to, I'm going to put them in bad. I'm going to put them in bad. I think they're just don't it's not a good place to spend your sculptures at this point there's so many other good commanders just don't do it we're gonna slap Moctezuma in the worst category he is a mightiest governor peacekeeping commander who cannot really be used in PvP so no use for him he's trash he's one of the worst commanders in the game to be honest with you so he definitely belongs there and also where is he I'm looking for him Suleiman yeah what are you doing brother they're just not they're just not good okay leadership he's a rally commander he is an attack tree commander a lot of his skills have to do with like the enemy's current rage level like you can't really in a big open field fight you're not going to manipulate it like that so it's not good he's not good he's trash he's garbage he is very bad for an investment i'm also going to drop bertrand here and we're going to drop uh, gilgamesh here we're going to drop chook here and we're going to drop ramses here they all go in the bad category and these commanders are just not 
I mean, they're they're they are outclassed by multiple commanders. Okay. And so there's really like as a free to play player, should you be investing in these commanders? Absolutely not. Okay. Absolutely not. Bertrand's a rally commander, right? So like right there, bad. Same thing with, um, with Gilgamesh. He's got this unique kind of blood craving thing that counters Zenobia, but like Zenobia is a garrison. You're not going to see on the open field. So it's like, you're like, what are you doing? Right? Like, what are you doing? It really, it counters healing, but like, we don't really see healing in the open field as meta. So it, it's just not a thing. Just don't do it. Some people still kind of stand by Ramses, but it's 2023 and almost 2024. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Can you use him? Sure. But like, is it a good investment? No, it's a bad investment. So don't do it. I want to put Justin in here so bad, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it. And, and the truth is like, you can use Justin in the open field. Is he a good investment for free to play? Not really, but uh, you could do it. And same thing with like Saladin, Alex, like, are they good investments? No, but do they deserve to be on the worst commander tier list? No, they don't. You still see them occasionally. They're okay. There's some uses for them, whatever. Obviously Minamoto and Barca, like Barca belongs here, right? But if we're talking about free to play players, you're not even gonna get him. So it doesn't even matter. I'll leave him there just in case you guys, like uh, I'll put him at the top here, just in case you guys are a low spender and you're wondering about Barca, no don't do it minamoto is fine now if i'm being honest i think maybe we could add another tier here and just differentiate like chandra gupta from a gold key commander right like i think that's fair if i wanted to be a little bit more specific we could add this and i think like the top like this row i'm pretty set on i think they're awful investments these commanders are like still not a place you should spend your sculptures but like they are technically slightly better than like a they I don't think they deserve to be in the same category as a gold key commander I think some of them do we'll put this over here like these guys are pretty bad so I think they deserve to be there but like these guys not there but still trash and that's gonna do it that is what I think are the worst investments right now as a free-to-play player as a new player or even as a low spender I would steer clear from all these commanders on the list all of them have been outclassed at least once if not two or three times by the time that I am recording this video and that means that unless they get some insane relic or update later down the line uh which of course you know if you want to know when that happens subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms video because I will post breaking news like that but until then these commanders everything you see here don't invest in just don't do it okay it's not worth it save your sculptures there's better things to spend them on we've got Herman Prime and Osher Benipal coming out here in just a couple of weeks probably and so that's going to push some of these archers like even farther down the list right so I wanted to make this video to wrap up 2023 and let you know what I think the worst commanders are now if you made it to the end of this video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kingdoms players might see it and while you're down there comment down below your thoughts what do you think about this list do you think that i am super biased do you think that this is spot on do you think that this is utterly wrong uh, are you like a big fan of mccall Harold? like let me know down below and uh i look forward to seeing you know where we agree and where we disagree and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace